In this video, we're going to discuss the subatomic particles that make up atoms and how we can tell how many of those individual subatomic particles there are in a particular atom or ion by looking at the periodic table. We'll first start by examining what particles there are. The only ones we're going to be interested in are the proton, the neutron, and the electron. And Really, there's only two things you really need to know about each of these particles. And the first is that, relatively speaking, a neutron and a proton are somewhat heavy. And an electron is very light. And that a proton carries a positive charge. And an electron carries a negative charge. And you may have guessed from the name neutron that it has no charge. It's electrically neutral. Okay. And if we want, we can use something called an atomic mass unit. To describe the masses here, and a neutron is going to be approximately equal to 1. A proton is going to be approximately equal to 1. An electron is very small, let us say, tiny in terms of its mass. So that allows us to draw a picture of an atom. And we'll start with a hydrogen atom. And the picture we're going to draw is not totally accurate. Uh, it involves the idea of a, of a proton. And we'll actually, we'll make some symbols here. We'll draw a proton as a little plus in a circle. A neutron is just an empty circle because it doesn't have an electrical charge, and an electron as a little uh, negative charge there. Okay, so if we look at a hydrogen atom, we can make a picture of it as proton, and then there's an electron, and it's moving some way around the, around the proton. Now, it's a little bit misleading, because since the advent of quantum mechanics, we know that we have to throw out this idea of a trajectory but it's probably useful at a very introductory level to imagine an atom as a little solar system. It's probably okay in the first week or two of your chemistry course to still have that picture in your head. You just have to remember that it's partially inaccurate and you're gonna to have to fix it later. But nevertheless, it is true to say that electrons move around the nucleus. Okay, there's some movement and the nucleus is very heavy. And so just as the Earth doesn't move very much when the moon is moving around it, the nucleus doesn't move very much when an electron is moving around it. Okay, so the simplest picture here, here we have is a typical hydrogen atom where you've got one proton, one neutron, or one, one uh, proton and one electron. That's it. Okay, and if we have a more complicated atom, it might have more. So for instance, for helium, you could have a proton another proton, a neutron, another neutron, and then you'd have electrons moving around it. Okay, so the electrons are moving around this, this nucleus. You'll notice that in both cases, the number of electrons, protons, are equal. That's because in general, uh, when we start off with an atom, it's going to be neutral. So later on, we'll look at what happens if we make an atom into an ion. You can see these pictures are going to get pretty complicated pretty quickly because once we move beyond hydrogen and helium, we start having more and more protons, neutrons, and electrons in an atom. So we need a way of summarizing that information that isn't so cumbersome. And the way we do that is using the periodic table. So in a periodic table, we have the symbol for each element, and we have a number for each element called the atomic number. And the atomic number actually has a symbol, symbol Z, and it is simply the number of protons in the atom. Since you always have a periodic table, you can always tell the number of protons in any particular element. 
So for instance, if we were to look at boron, we immediately know that boron has five protons. Let's use the periodic table to analyze a neutral atom. Let's look at an atom of sodium. Okay, so we look at a sodium atom, and we find sodium over here, and we see its atomic number is 11. So at that point, we can say a sodium atom has 11 protons. Now, if it's a neutral atom, we know that the number of protons equal the number of electrons. Because electrons have a negative charge, protons have a positive charge, and if it's a neutral atom, they have to add up to zero. Otherwise, it wouldn't be electrically neutral. So at that point, we can say, oh, if we have 11 protons, we must have 11 electrons. Now, this is true for neutral atoms. However, it's not true for ions. So for instance, if we looked at a sodium ion that is plus one. If it's plus one, we usually don't write the one if it's, a, if it's just plus one or minus one, we just write plus or minus. We write a number if it's more than that. If it's plus one, that must mean that there's more protons than electrons. But the number of protons is fixed for sodium because remember, we can look at the periodic table and we can see sodium has atomic number 11. It has to have 11 protons. So since it has 11 protons, let's write that. If it's plus one, it can't have 11 electrons. It has to have one fewer. We have 10 electrons. Why? Well, if we have plus 11 as the charge of all the protons added together, and minus 10 is the number of charge in all the electrons, we can see that's going to add up to plus 1. And that is the charge that's shown right there. So simply by looking at the periodic table, we can figure out the number of protons and electrons, not just on neutral atoms, but also on ions. We haven't talked about the number of neutrons yet, and that's because for a given element, there are more than one possibility for the number of neutrons on a given atom. So for instance, let's look at hydrogen. We could have hydrogen one, which has a total mass and atomic mass units of one. We can have hydrogen two, we can have hydrogen three. Now all of these have the same number of protons because remember, looking back at the periodic table, we can see that hydrogen is defined as having an atomic number of one, which means it has one proton. So if it's hydrogen, it always has one proton. However, the number of neutrons is variable. And because neutrons are just as heavy as protons, that means the mass of atoms can be variable. So isotopes uh, are the same element And of course, we can just say that's the same as saying it's the same number of protons. But different masses. Why different masses? Because different number of neutrons. OK. So let's analyze each of these. So we know all of them have, in terms of the number of protons, that's easy because they're hydrogen. It's just one, one, one. And what about the total mass? The total mass is given by this pre-superscript. So that pre-superscript is going to be the mass.
And so since the mass, I'll just put the mass here, is going to be 1, 2, and 3. So we can see what the number of neutrons will be just by subtracting. Since we have a total mass of 1, we've got one proton, it must be those zero neutrons. Over here we have a mass of 2, one proton, so that means that we must have one neutron. Total mass of 3, one proton, must have two neutrons. Remember, the vast, vast bulk of an atom is determined uh, by just the number of protons and neutrons because the electrons weigh roughly a thousand times less. So they're really negligible in terms of mass. Okay, what about the number of electrons? Well, the number of electrons well, are any of these ions? No, they're not. These are just neutral hydrogen atoms. So if they're neutral, that must mean that the positive charge and the negative charge is the same, which means all of these are just going to have one electron. So you can see, uh, as long as we know which isotope we're talking about, in other words, what the mass of the atom is, we can figure out all the subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. So let's have you do two practice problems. I'll give you a minute to work these out. Okay, I hope you remember to use the periodic table. Looking at nitrogen, you see that nitrogen is element seven. And so you should be very quickly able to say that we've got protons equal to seven. It's neutral, so electrons also equal to seven. But it weighs 14, so we have to subtract seven from 14 to say, oh, there's also seven neutrons. What about a fluoride ion? Using the periodic table, we see fluorine over here, element nine. So we've got so we've got nine protons, but we have to be careful. It's got an overall negative one charge, so there must be more electrons than protons. In fact, there's just one more, so it must be 10 electrons. We look at the mass, the mass is 19. We only have nine protons, so it must be that we have 10 neutrons. Because if we add the nine and the 10, we get the total mass, 19.